And now, ladies and gentlemen, a touch of the past, present, and future, Vernon and Ryan. Now we have been around through many a city and town, but still we can't find out what it's all about. We mean, of course, the girls, the pretty little girls. We ask them once, we ask them twice, they make us feel like mice. Oh, why do they say yes when they really mean no? And why do they stop when they really should go? How can you answer that? We don't know where we're at. We're so confused that we can't tell. We hit them once, we're under their smell. Oh, why do they squirm when we just try the neck? If they keep that up, we will both be a wreck. We can't stand this much more. We wish that we could score with any one of our little girls. We're going older with any one of our little girls. Oh, God, well, aren't the folks out there really wonderful? Ah, oh, they certainly are, Eddie. You know, they, they give you the feeling of well, they give you the feeling of old time show business. No, I should say they do. And you know, Glenn, when you talk about old time show business, uh -huh. there's one phase of it that you just cannot overlook. Uh -huh. And that is? <laughs> that is the minstrel days. Boy, weren't those good old minstrel shows wonderful? Oh, I should say they were. You know, Glenn, minstrels were the daddy entertainment. That's right. They used to start their shows off with that famous old line, gentlemen, be seated. Right, and performers, performers like that great monologist, Lou Dockstadter would come out on stage and Lou would have a smudge of black on him right up there. Yeah, yeah, and George Primrose had one right down here. That's right, and oh gosh, there were a host of others. Names and fellas like Honey Boy Evans and Bert Williams. Yeah, yeah, and Eddie Leonard and Al Jolson. Oh man, you're talking about the tops there. And while we're at it, while we're at it, don't you forget those old end men there. Oh, those comical end men. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Tambo. Well, now, well, well, what is it, Mr. Bone? Boy, I want to know, I want to know, what is all this talk I hear about you having a job in the circus? Oh, I had me a job in the circus, but I quit there. You quit there? Uh-huh. Well, why did you do that? Well, I had to do me two jobs at one time. Two jobs at one time? That's right. Well, sonny boy, what was they? Well, first of all, I had to stick my head to a hole in a piece of canvas, and people throw baseballs at me. Oh, my! That must have been hard on your head. Oh, well, I didn't mind that part of it so much. Well, then, what was the trouble? It was the people behind me throwing darts. <laughs> and boy, uh, tell me, tell me, what's all this I hear about you buying a cow farm? Oh, did you hear tell about that? Mm. Well, sonny boy, I bought me a large cow farm. Man, I bought me a cow farm with 99 cows and one bull. You bought a cow farm with 99 cows and one bull. That is what I said, son, precisely. Well, boy, you must be independent. No, but that darn bull is. <laughs> but you know, son, you know, the other day, the other day, some uncouth individual come by, and do you know what he done done? I know. Tell me, what did he do do do? <laughs> I tell you, son, he done come along, and he went and cut off all the tails on my cow. He cut off all the tails on your cows. That's right. Why, man, that's terrible. I know, I know. You know what I'm going to have to do now? I know. Tell me. What are you going to have to do now? Well, boy, I'm going to have to sell them all wholesale. Well, why are you going to have to sell them all wholesale? Well, I can't retail them. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I love those modern minstrel men.